app was really, really easy to get. And it really is. If we think about all the types of ventures, we can rank them on a, a matrix like this. Are they high innovation? Are they high growth? If they're both, they're what we call glamorous companies. If they're neither, they're what we call an economic core. What we see is that informal investors will invest in any one of these top five. And informal investors invest, on average, every year, $600 billion around the world in over 33 million companies. Venture capitalists only go up top. They only go for the fastest growing companies, the most innovative companies, and they only invest about $40 billion a year in 11,000 companies. So the odds of getting venture capital are relatively limited. Unless you're in this category, even then, it's really, really difficult. The other thing I'd like to point out to students is that venture capitalists don't invest in startups. They invest in companies that already have sales and that are poised to grow really, really fast, very quickly. So that light blue line that you can barely see at the bottom, that's the total number of deals in early stage startup companies in any given year. And the red bars, um, um, the total, uh, total number of deals. Oh, the, the red bar is the total number of deals, and the light blue line is how much money they've actually invested. Got that a little bit back. You can see that most of the deals and most of the money are in the yellow line and the blue bars, which are later stage companies. So that may seem like bad news, but the good news is that most new ventures, even in the United States, don't require a lot of startup capital. Entrepreneurs are able to provide almost 70% of that startup capital themselves. It typically takes about $60,000 to start a new business in the United States. I would suspect it's probably a bit lower here in Mexico. And that means that entrepreneurs put in about 40,000 themselves through their bank accounts, through mortgages on their house, some entrepreneurs will take out credit cards and use credit card debt to fund it. And that they have to go out and get $20,000 from external sources, which again is primarily going to be friends, family, and school. And so if we look at where the money comes from from all the donations around the world, you can see that family are the most important. So what I told the students here is that you better go home every Sunday for family dinner and be really nice to mom and dad. Because if you start missing those dinners and you go asking for money, they're not going to be too happy with you. <laughs> um, this chart here shows the percentage of the population that is an informal investor in different countries. And you can see that in the U.S., the percentage of informal investors is about 4.5% of the population. In the U.S., they invest on average of $6,000. And that means informal investors in the U.S are investing about $100 billion a year versus only $20 billion to $25 billion for venture capital. In Mexico, your informal investor rate is higher, but I don't know what the average investment is here in Mexico. Our last piece of the puzzle is the team. You have a great opportunity. You have uh, the necessary resources. You have to have a team that can execute on the resources. So you need a team with relevant experience to complement your 50,000 chunks of knowledge. You need a team that is highly motivated to excel. You need a team that's committed and determined. A team that can tolerate risk and ambiguity. The one thing we know about starting a new venture is that there's tons of ambiguity, and you're going to be doing two different things every day in the early day, and you have to be able to handle it. You need to be creative. You need to have a team focus of control. I used the example earlier that in a large company, if you do something for your boss, and your boss takes it to his boss, who gets the credit? Your boss. If you give something to your boss, and he takes it to his boss, and there's something wrong, who gets the blame? You. Now, if you do that in a small company, you kill the morale, the team disintegrates, and it's all over. So you have to make sure that we have a celebration of all the great things that the team is doing, and you don't get too punitive when there are mistakes. You try to learn from those mistakes and move forward. You need to be adaptable, 
lead time and opportunity obsession. It basically made Zach star success. <laughs> so we ran it full circle, we'll get to the closer. So, when we picture it all together, I think of a juggling. And what makes juggling easy? It's easier if all the oranges are the same size. It's not nearly as exciting as when we watch jugglers down on the mall. We like to see them juggling a grape, a watermelon, a chainsaw, because that's kind of dangerous. But it's a heck of a lot more risky. So what you're trying to do is to get these balls into the same size. And you do that through business planning, where you help to understand where you're from and what gaps you have. And what we know is that entrepreneurship is difficult. Steve Spinelli, who was the founder of Jiffy Loop, he had been the first person in his family to go to college. And his mother's an Italian from the old country. And when he comes home, he goes, hey, mom, I'm going to start a oil change business. She broke down and cried. You've got a college education in that free son of your leader now. I can't understand this. So she was very sad. Of course, when he became a multi-millionaire, she was a little bit more understanding, but it was hard at the beginning. The other thing you have to worry about is people who say, that is the stupidest idea I've ever heard. And you, as an entrepreneur, have to believe in yourself when nobody else does. Then there are going to be those who try to blow you out of the water. That's your competition. If they see you and they get scared, they're going to react. And you have to be able to anticipate that. And you have to also understand what the rules of the game are. What are the regulations? What are the laws? What do you have to do to keep the government off of your back? So great entrepreneurs are leaders because they help the team hit the goal of executing on the opportunity. Great entrepreneurs can communicate because they sell the opportunity to investors and they get the financial resources they need to make the business a success. Great entrepreneurs are creative because they help the team get there with maybe a little bit less resources than would be ideal. That is the Timmons model. That's our entrepreneurial process. This is what distinguishes an opportunity-based entrepreneur from a necessity-based entrepreneur. And as I told the group earlier, my daughters have braces, and I need to get a lot of money to pay for them. So if you could buy these books, I'd appreciate it. All right? So that's all I have to say. If there are any questions, uh, please uh, go ahead and ask.